Hey guys, Josh here and welcome back to my Mass Effect Andromeda information series. This is the final part in this series I'm going to do and today we're talking about choices and the future of the series itself. So, um, Paragon Renegade was a major part of um, the original trilogy. Um, it was sort of key to some big, big choices in the game. Um, it, it influenced what you could say, it influenced actions that happened and it was you know, central to the game and it defines your character in a way and it was all oh, I'm doing a Paragon playthrough or I'm doing a Renegade playthrough that's kind of the big impact it had on choices um, but there were restrictions to that again, you were restricted to either playing a good or a bad character you could do sort of a balance but you always felt kind of you had to lean towards more towards one um, it meant that in conversations you had blue options with Paragon Renegade options which were red and um, you basically depending on how high or you know low your Paragon and Renegade were, those options may or may not have been available to you. So it, it influenced what you could say in, in dialogue, influenced um, actions you could do. And it was really restricted um, to what you could do. Um, and so in Andromeda, that is gone. Um, they want to give the player more opportunity to just say what they want and express themselves more. Um, you can sort of agree or disagree to someone um, without being punished or getting a feeling of oh, I'm a bad person now um, which you got a lot in the original trilogy that's gone um, there's sort of tones of dialogue there's heart, head, professional and casual so heart I guess is kind of sort of certainly for romance um, also probably for being sort of empathetic with people that kind of thing um, head, I'm not really sure what it means by head maybe head's more sort of calculated thinking about it you know and like an interesting suggestion approach maybe something like that professionals again it's like professional really sort of military way of approaching it um yeah and, and then finally casual casual kind of probably a light-hearted jokey way of re replying whether this will apply to all dialogue options you're always going to have these different types of responses i don't know if there is that'd be cool um i don't know it might be have to see but yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, and there's no like meter. Like I said, Paragon Renegade's gone. Um, they want you to allow the freedom to kind of just say what you want without to worry about if, whether that's making you a bad character or a good character. Um, same with interrupts. Um, interrupts were basically you could interrupt a conversation um, with either a Paragon or Renegade option. For example, someone's talking and you don't like them. It, sometimes if they're being a dick, the option would flash up and it, it would say... Uh, renegade like trigger and you could if you did it you punch them or you sort of push them and say shut up that kind of thing and that's considered a bad action um or if say someone is crying you can comfort them with a paragon or they're hurt comfort them with paragon and um, there've been options uh, i'm trying to think in my recent playthrough samara basically samara is follows a code as uh, a just a car and part of the code is, is that if an Ardot Yatsi lives outside the sanctuary, it must die. And so basically the sanctuary gets destroyed. The monastery, not sanctuary. And her daughter basically, one of her other daughters, um, now has no home basically. So she's going, she thinks the only way to get out of the code is to kill herself. So she doesn't have to kill her daughter. And you can interrupt with a Paragon option. Basically then her daughter says, um, I can stay here. You know, there's not much left of it, but I can stay here. And that's based on you interrupting and saying, what are you doing? Don't kill yourself, basically, and allows that situation to happen. Um, at the same time, there's the flip side. Like I say there's a point where Cerberus is attacking Citadel, and udina has got the Council's hostage, almost, basically. And you have the option to shoot him with a Renegade option. And it probably is the best choice at that point, just to get him dead. Because if not, I think there's chances where he can actually kill one of the counselors he can kill Caden or Ashley if they're there Caden or Ashley end up killing him anyway um so yeah it seems like the best choice in anyone's mind is if you've got someone threatening you like that and you know 100% they are a bad guy just shoot them um but it was considered a bad option to do that and it reflected on your renegade and because of that then your character then start especially in two and three that your character started looking kind of evil kind of because their implants started glowing red through their eyes and stuff if you're a bad guy you could get rid of it but it was kind of a sense of like 
you're being punished kind of for making choices that might be sound but just considered a little bit evil but they're not really evil and um, there's no real evil choices although in free there were a few um so yeah they want them to just rather than saying sort of a good or bad choice it comes up shoot punch um can you know help heal something like that so um it's not good or bad it's just you're doing that action and you can choose where in that moment whether you want to do it or not and how it might reflect and how it might you know help the situation or worsen the situation you basically have to choose whether your action can be good or bad not as a good option or as a bad option um, which is cool um, not good or bad on you personally good or bad on what happens which is far more meaningful um, it's kind of a sense of in the original trilogy of everything happened but kind of what you didn't define the character not what happened around them um, somewhat obviously you still, still agree with what happened um, so there's no right or wrong and there's pros and cons to each and you have the chance to basically play the game how you want which is good and I'm really looking forward to that to kind of just if I feel that someone's being a dick um, or they're endangering someone and I get the option to shoot them I'm just going to shoot them um, which is cool um, the future now the future of the franchise um, obviously they're leaving the door open for more games they've said that um, and they've spent how many years has it been since 3? Good four. It's going to be five years, I think, by the time Andromeda's actually out. It's about five years they've been working on this game, basically, and they've done Inquisition in that time, but most part of four, year, four or five years working on this game, making a universe for it. Um, because although it's, it's still part of the original universe, it is a new universe in the, at the same time. And so they spent a lot of time in it, so obviously they're going to want to do a lot with it. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be a trilogy again. Um, that'd be nice. Um, but what they call it, I don't know, because they can't exactly call the next one Andromeda 2, because it seems a little bit kind of a stupid title, Mass Effect Andromeda 2. However, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a thing, which I think is a stupid title. And I think it should have been Red Dead something else, but never mind. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It probably won't be called Andromeda 2. They'll probably come up with some other name based on, I don't know, sight in the world. Um, Mass Effect Andromeda, the point of Mass Effect Andromeda is you're getting to Andromeda and you're kind of making your place in Andromeda. That's what this game's about. And then the next one will be whatever, I guess, the ending and Andromeda leads into. Something to do with the, probably the main enemy. That'll be the focus of 2 and 3. So they'll have their own names respectively. Um, so that'll be interesting. Again, with how it ends. And they said... They don't really want they haven't really revealed anything about whether there's multiple endings or what choices you have. They said it's a surprise, but it's different than the trilogy. Um so it'd be interesting to see what they do. It doesn't really tell you anything, which is a shame. But yeah, it's interesting to see how they're gonna end this how they're gonna end this game and how they're gonna make your choices at the end count and then the count into the next one and the next one after that. I'm assuming they're gonna allow you to bring the character through again. They got to. That was just a key thing. In the original trilogy so to not have that would be just stupid idiotic and bioware seemed to have learned a lot recently from mistakes with free so i'm hoping that yeah that you're going to be able to bring through your character and that all those choices are going to have a nice ending at the end of all of it in probably 10 years from now when we finally get the final part of this trilogy so yeah it'd be really interesting to see what your choices are how they reflect how they carry through um yeah i'm hoping bioware have learned from the ending and the backlash of the ending of three. I didn't personally dislike the ending of three. It just had a sense of kind of you'd done so much and done so many choices and they didn't count for anything because ultimately it was, well, here you go, just choose an ending, which was pretty much what the ending was. The only thing the extended edition added was that if you had enough, um, I think if it was if you had enough water assets, you could basically refuse an ending and just it would just end and you, you get another ending where basically at some point another generation defeat the reapers um which is somewhat better to give you an option to just say no i won't choose an ending we'll, we'll fight you or our next generation will do better than us which is kind of a nicer ending in a way i personally i personally like control ending um control's my best ending and my canon ending because that is most like shepherd shepherd makes the ultimate ultimate sacrifice becomes the reapers basically and repairs everything and helps which i think is the best ending um so yeah 
enough about that anyway. So yeah, I'm hoping they learn from the backlash from Free's ending and make the ending in this one meaningful and also ultimately in the end of the trilogy meaningful. Um, there's a new game plus, you can bring through your character, do a game plus with it, most RPGs have this now anyway, but you can change your gender it says. It hasn't said anything about whether you can change your class, that seems a little bit kind of cheap, but changing gender, I suppose if you want to do another playthrough and you don't want to have to re-level a whole character but you want to see, you just want to play as a female or you want to play as a male if you play as a female first, this is nice you have that option, um, it's kind of cool. So that's it. Um, I've really enjoyed doing this series. It's been really nice to go through this game. Mass Effect is my favourite series, um, without doubt. And so it's been really nice to kind of dissect all this information and apply my own sort of fandom and knowledge of the series to it and speculate. Um, it's been really nice to do it. And you guys seem to have liked it. Um, it's, it's received quite a following. You know, it's got a decent amount of views. I'm pleased with how it's done on the channel. Um, thank you for watching everyone. Um, there will be more Andromeda videos definitely. Um, probably, especially as we get closer to the game. Um, I'll do random other pieces as more information is released probably. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining me on this little information series and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys! <laughs>